ways of practicing kata. You've got to remember that the kata itself was intended to summarize and encapsulate quite a lot of self-defense strategies. You can almost think that each kata was a different style of fighting or dealt with a different style of fighting. So we can work on the embersen lines so that our angles are correct. We can work our muscles and our body structure that we've got the power to actually deliver these techniques. We're looking at the bunkai. Uh, well, okay, let's get to the bunkai just now. The embersen line training and the strengthening training and going taking basics out of the kata and working those basics doing your elbow strikes and your knee kicks and all of that is to make sure that by the time you get to bunkai training analysis of the kata, cutting the kata apart is that you get the correct gist of what the person who created this kata or the group of people who created this kata intended to teach you so now we get to timing and timing is vital to give your movement context. If you think of uh, timing as your punctuation marks uh, when reading, if there were no punctuation marks and you were reading a book, it would make it extremely difficult and sometimes even impossible to get the correct context of what the author of that book was trying to give you. So if you look at punctuation as a way of giving you context while reading, you need to look at timing in the kata as a way of the creator or creators of this kata to give you context behind the movements. So if we take Geki uh, Side Age, we have quick quick pause and then we move on quick quick and pause that pause there shows you part one that's it that's the end of that combination you can go and be creative and go right but how would i make an application from this point to here and yeah there are a lot of people that do that do it enjoy it but I believe that pause signified that's it. Strategically, I get uh, choked, I move, I get next to my opponent, I hit, I track the arm, I do a shoulder lock, throw the person on the floor. That's it. That's done. I don't then from there go picking my opponent back up again and then hitting him as he travels down because I'm super strong. So that's why I say the pause in that part of the kata teaches you, done, that's your combination. When you do the bunkai, look at those three movements as part of the same thing. So I know there's other instructors again who go, no, 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 no. bunkai should be only for this. And yeah, you can analyze each movement, but that's like analyzing each alphabetical symbol in the story. That's, excuse me, that's not helping you to understand the story that the guy's writing. Understanding what an A is, good. Understand that first in grade one. Then learn words and sentences and structure and then start writing stories or at least reading stories. The same goes for the kata. If you take every single kata and you need to really now go every single block that you get like this or every single punch or every single movement here, you now need to take individually as a bunkai, that's bull. That's a waste of time. So try and find the timing in the kata and then analyze what those movements mean. That in context, those movements in, in a row. So let's take, we've done our last one here, one, two, three, that way and back. 
we move forward. The cafe here goes a little bit stronger. Timing. What is he trying to tell you? Well, here it's saying you're going head on into this guy. You're attacking head on. Power is needed. I'm going to have to work for what I'm getting here. If I don't work for what I've got here, my opponent's going to take over my center line and wipe the floor with me. So it is telling me that the moment I'm moving forward here, I'm not taking any angles. The guy is here. I'm working for it. I'm grabbing, I'm pulling, I'm holding, I'm fighting until I get to the correct position to now continue very quick movements, which then is release, go. You got the opportunity to strike him. So the cutter would go slow, slow, fast, fast. And then a little tiny pause at that point thing. Kind of the cutter just wants to make sure you understand. I've done the kick, I've done the elbow. I need to now first make sure I'm in position. Because if those movements didn't work, the next movement's going to work. So as I land, one, tiny pause. Are you ready? Now, get the hand behind your opponent's head. Pull your opponent down. Get him behind the neck. Get your arm underneath your opponent's arm. Do a kind of a shoulder lock. Hit behind the neck. The punch itself is actually just showing where you're doing the attack. So be it a punch, be it a uh, edge hand strike, elbow strike, even a knee kick, it doesn't matter. But you're, the cut has tried to tell you there, your opponent was here, his head's now there, attack there. Don't go, <laughs> he's not there. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. He's not there. Your opponent's there. So your cut is just going, bam, hit. Are you ready? Little pause, one, two. Now he's ready, now take him out. Now the cutter goes, he's there. Finish. Right. So I hope that kind of makes clear where my mind is at in terms of the timing. How important the timing is of a cutter to give you context as to what the movements in relation to each other actually mean and where the combinations actually stop as well. Have fun.